Hey guys, this is the mind of Lilith and thank you for joining me today. I wanted to quickly share my thoughts about this uh, brawl, mutiny, <laughs> that took place a couple days ago in Alabama. Um, but before I begin, um, if you ordered a reading for me within the past week, you're going to get your order today. Um, I really appreciate your patience. I've had a lot of work to do at my job job. Um, my um, supervisor is on leave for a couple of months, so I have to take on uh, their responsibilities as well. And today is one of the few days that I have off. So again, I appreciate your patience. So back to the situation in Alabama. I do not condone unwarranted uh, abuse and violence against innocent people. I don't like chaos. I don't like just melee and drama without any socio-political aim or goal. Um, we've seen this happen a couple of years ago with the Black Lives Matter movement. We've had all these protests and rallies and all this other stuff. And it's pretty much ineffective unless there is a specific goal or objective in mind that aligns with the needs of our communities. However, it was really heartwarming and wonderful to see black people come together in solidarity to fight against an external threat. External meaning non-black. Um, we see videos of black people fighting each other, killing each other. This is a part of our culture now. Um, after the 1960s and 70s, you know, the FBI devised ways to weaponize our culture against us. So they promoted violence and uh, depravity and drug use and prostitution in our music. So by and large, when you see black people come together, um, more than likely we're gonna fight each other instead of the external threats to our community. So it was really amazing, honestly, to watch a group of productive black citizens because these people look like they had jobs, right? The black folks on this boat look like they had jobs, they had uh, responsibilities, they had mortgages, homes, families. It didn't look like a bunch of rah-rah individuals who wanted to start a fight and cut up. These look like productive citizens who were working a job and something just happened to pop off with other citizens. Not the police, not the state, but just other citizens who were starting trouble. Usually, like over the past several decades, we only come together as a community when there is like police violence against us. In the Rodney King situation, in the George Floyd situation, in the Mike Brown situation, it's always police violence. We rarely, if ever, have smoke for the Dylan Roofs or the George Zimmermans. Like regular citizens, we pretty much leave them alone. This is the first time that I've seen, in my recent memory, I don't know, um, black people rally to support other black people to fight against a citizen, not the state or the government, but regular citizens who have been deputized by white supremacy. Um, this is the first time I've seen that probably ever. So a couple of years ago, I was going to move to the South during the pandemic. I'm like, you know what? I can't stand New York City. It's dirty. It's crowded. It's this, that, the third. I'm moving down South. I was not prepared for the culture shock that I experienced when I went down there. Um, there's still this energy of like docility or fear or um, I don't say slave mentality, but a brokenness that I felt when I visited the state that I was going to move to. And, you know, the color caste system was very evident. Dark-skinned people, janitors and cooks in the back, light-skinned people, white people, they're out in the front. They were the ones with the most power. They're the ones with the biggest voices, so on and so forth. So, and it seemed like the people who were there were okay with, or they had resigned to their position in life. I'm dark-skinned, I'm black, it's just the way it is. Anybody from the Northeast, Chicago, Midwest, California, whatever, who visits the South, they will see the difference in the culture and the way that the people think. So with that context, I'm even more prouder of the folks in Alabama who stood up against these racist store owners. Um, I didn't think, I didn't want to assume they were racist initially because things happen. But after reading some of their posts and their comments in response to the ridicule and the criticism, I realized that they were in fact racist. Not really surprising because it is what it is. Um, when I saw the screenshots of the event on this boat, um, the first thought that came to my mind was a mutiny. And a mutiny is some form of rebellion. Sometimes it happens on ships, sometimes it, sometimes it happens on the ground, but it's rebellion. That's the first thing that popped in my mind. I don't know why, but it just reminded me of that. But it was great to see the young man swimming across that lake 
that river to get to the dock to help his fellow security guard out. That security guard was an older man. He had a pot belly, which to me means that he was in his mid 40s or early 50s maybe. He was taking care of his family, his kids, he had a job. He wasn't some thug on the corner. He was just doing his job and he was attacked for doing his job. It did not escape me that the staff members on this boat were dark skinned black folk, um, the security guards. They were dark skinned black people and more than likely they don't get paid a lot of money. So you have this white property owner who's racist, right? Who's benefited from white supremacy attacking this black police officer, sorry, this black security guard who more than likely has suffered from racism throughout his whole life as a dark skinned black man in the South. He's a security guard getting paid probably chunk change, okay? Being attacked by these, the descendants of racist <laughs> slave owners who own property, whose white privilege has benefited them to the point where they have their own little boat, right? Their family's hanging out, they got their own little business. And this black dude who's trying to take care of his family is being beat down by or jumped by a bunch of racists who are in a socially superior position than him, right? They are the master class or the ruling class attacking a working class black man trying to take care of his family. It was really heartwarming to see these young black men of the same class, right? These are all the slaves, okay? These young black slaves coming together to fight against this white supremacist property owner who thought he had the right to put his hands on a black man doing his job and to jump him and to jump him in front of a bunch of other black people because you ain't gonna do shit, right? Y'all don't do nothing to us. Dylan Roof shot up a whole church full of black folk, nothing happened. This white guy in, from, you know, in Buffalo shot up a whole a grocery store, nothing happened. George Zimmerman shot up, shot an innocent young black man, nothing happened. We can do whatever we want to you. And so it was great to see the black folks say not today, especially in Alabama. The vibe would have been different in Chicago or New York because we tend to pop off a little easier with these folks. And you know, we have a bit more arrogance in the North when it comes to dealing with white people. In the South, the people are very submissive and they have been beaten down psychologically. I've seen it myself. I'm not saying that they're cowards. I'm not saying that at all. But a lot of them have resigned to the situation as it is. They've resigned to their social station. You know, they've resigned to the, the um the racist system that is affecting them. Okay. Um, they don't think they can change anything. A lot of them don't want to, a lot of them are afraid to. So it was just amazing to see all of these people rally up in support of not a celebrity, right? Not a victim of police brutality, but a regular old citizen doing his job. And then you got black people with who have resources. They're not, I'm not saying they're rich, but the man with the, you know, WWE chair, um, he looked like he had a job, right? He looked like he had a career. Like he was just chilling with his family. He looked like he had something to lose. The energy I got from this whole melee was rebellion. And I, I do think that there is some sort of spiritual significance. I'm not saying that this means that black people are gonna win a race war. Because to be honest, if we started a race war today with these white people, more than likely we get washed. Why would we get washed? Because they own our schools. They own our hospitals. They own our, our grocery stores. They control the water treatment plants, okay? They own the land that we're renting off of. Illegally, but they still own it, right? They basically control every aspect of our lives, which is why they worked really hard to destroy our economy, to destroy our communities, to destroy our families. So that in the event of a race war, that they would have complete control over everything we say and do. They control the telecommunication systems, right? So if you're gonna have a race war and you wanna go on social media and you're gonna go on your phone and call somebody, no, they'll shut the phone lines down. You can't say nothing. That is the purpose. That was the purpose of them making sure that we were dependent on them in the first place. And a lot of us like to be comfortable. We enjoy, you know, watching TV and Netflix and our crab boils and, you know, going to the club and hanging out, having fun. We don't have a warmongering culture. So a lot of us are not psychologically equipped to deal with the type of warfare that these white folks are ready to inflict upon us. This is fun for them. War is not fun for us. So before we have an irresponsible black folks saying, let's have a race war, um, please know your enemy. Please understand your enemy. If you are saying that white folks are your enemy, please study him, understand his ways like the Chinese have. The Chinese have done things the right way. What they did was this. The Chinese, they allowed themselves to be exploited by the European for the sake of getting intellectual property, the technology, 
the um, the resources, learning about you know mass manufacturing infrastructure. They've learned the ways of their enemy, and now they're in a position to overpower their enemy, as opposed to them saying, "Yo, we want to fight these white supremacists after you know World War II with sticks and stones." They wasn't they were not prepared for that, so they had to study their enemy over decades. They infiltrated their their social systems, their social networks. They go to the best schools. They run their technology companies. Like the Chinese have done things the right way. We as black people think that us having a little fight on a boat means that we want some war. Y'all didn't win nothing. Just to be a hundred with it. Like, you know, these white people have chemical weapons. They have biological weapons. They have nuclear weapons. They control your food supply. You're not gonna go to McDonald's in the middle of a race war. You're not gonna go to Walmart or Target or Kroger's in the middle of a race war. You will get your ass stomped at this point because you're not prepared for it. You haven't been preparing for warfare. You've been twerking, having fun for the past several decades. And the music has supported this. So they have poisoned your culture and your community to the point where you're not you're not strong enough to fight a hot war with these people. You will have to go a different route. However, again, it, I, I am aware of the spiritual significance of this rebellion, the small little spark of life that black people have shown during that fight. Um, it showed a warrior spirit. I don't know if this outcome would have been the same in a country like uh, Barbados or St. Kitts or St. Lucia or Kenya. I'm not sure if the vibe would have been the same, but um, I really have to commend the residents of Alabama for putting in the work. Again, this does not mean you want a race war, but war is also psychological, right? Um, the black community has been bombarded with anti-black anti-community anti-family sentiments for a, a while you know for a while and it's kind of revved up with the social media era we've had the the MGTOW movement save yourself black man divestment movements gender wars uh class wars colorism phenotype wars um uh, you know it's just constant fighting and infighting among us between the men and the women gay and straight poor rich like just constant division so it was great to see black folks of a similar economic class um defending a regular working class black male again not a celebrity not some thug who was robbing a store or whatever not some thug a regular old black man doing his job and they didn't do it for any reward they did it because they felt like it was it was something that had to be done right um a lot of times on social media now people do things for brownie points people you know will pretend to be social justice warriors for the sake of getting like brownie points right a talking shit on twitter is the equivalent of actually fighting white supremacy on the ground and it's not true right virtual sibling can only go so far in this day and age so once again i don't condone um just unwarranted violence against innocent people but on the flip side it was very rewarding to watch black people black men and women come together in solidarity to fight back nobody was killed nobody was stabbed nobody got shot nobody drowned none of that happened um and so i really did appreciate the show of solidarity and support that we showed each other or that the black folks in alabama showed each other i'm not sure if the same thing would have happened in new york i doubt it you know we saw what happened with the dude that got choked out in the train we saw what happened you know to that black dude that got choked out um by the police officers in Staten Island a few years ago. I forgot his name. Um, my brain is washed right now. <laughs> but, you know, in these northern cities, the cops have been showing their asses for a while. Um, white folks have been showing their asses for a while. And nothing has happened to them to this extent from what I have seen. We are more inclined to fight each other and to kill each other than we are other people that have, you know, animosity towards us, other races. If you look on the news, on every single continent, black people get their asses bust. We get tag teamed and toe tagged by everybody, okay? I'm not saying that all non-black people are racist. I'm not saying that at all. But China, Russia, uh, India, parts of Africa, the Middle East, South uh, America, black people, especially if you're dark skinned, um, you're getting jumped on and tag teamed by these white supremacist patriarchal corporations. And white supremacy doesn't necessarily have to mean white people or Europeans. Um, these Asians are white supremacists too. Hispanics are also white supremacists, okay? So in every country and continent where you have a patriarchy, you have white supremacy because 
The matriarchy is black supremacy. The mother of all races and civilization is a black woman. So in order to, you know, dethrone her and to take her power from her, you have to create the opposite, which is white supremacy, the patriarchy, which ironically was created by dark skinned black men. But I'll get into that another time. Black people around the planet are getting toe tagged and tag teamed and we don't we don't seem to fight back. Or we don't fight back enough. Um, we think that assimilation and miscegenation is a way of fighting white supremacy when you're just saying that they won. Like, in order for me to have a good life, I have to have a baby with a white person so that my child has a better life than I did. So you're basically supporting the notion that in order to have a good life and to be happy and successful and prosperous, you have to look like them. You can't look like yourself as a black person and become a powerful, successful um, individual in some of these countries so you have to join your enemy in a sense or have babies with with a white person to protect your bloodline from extermination in a sense if you go to the caribbean the ruling family so the elites are light-skinned go to africa similar situations especially in north africa go to asia go to it's the same dynamic black in the back white in the front light in the middle and so again to see dark-skinned people coming together working class dark-skinned people coming together to fight against these white racists um in solidarity with a working class black man a dark-skinned working class black man he's not jay-z he's not you know kanye west he's not any of these fake-ass celebrities who complain about racism but give their money to white folks on a daily basis and live in white communities and pay white accountants and pay white lawyers he's not one of those people he's a regular old man with a regular degular job, probably getting paid minimum wage or whatever, a little above that in Alabama as a security guard to take care of his kids. And his community showed support to him. Everybody was getting it in. <laughs> Not just the other security guards and the other crew members on the boat, but everybody was getting it in. You know, even the passengers, the patrons, they were getting it in too. The little boy who swam over, what they call a black woman, he was getting it in too. The WWE black dude that was hitting people with the chair, he was getting it in. Everybody was was putting in work and they weren't doing it to instigate anything, but they did it to sort of like establish some rules of conduct, okay? To establish some boundaries. You do not get to disrespect us while we are serving you. It's bad enough we're at the bottom of society. It's bad enough we're working at these shitty ass jobs that pay us no money. It's bad enough we have poor health care, poor education, poor food, no power. It's bad enough we have all these things working against us. We're still working at these jobs to take care of our families. And you come along with your, your white racism and your entitlement, right? And your property ownership, white male who owns a boat. And you think you can put your hands to me just because you have been deputized by the racist state, by the government for decades and centuries now. So they learned a lesson. Now I'm gonna say this, um, I wouldn't be surprised if there was some sort of retaliation against these black folk. I wouldn't be surprised. Not even against these people, against an innocent black kid in some other town in, in Alabama or Georgia. There's going to be retaliation, but that should not make us afraid to do what we gotta do regardless. There's gonna be retaliation, absolutely. And again, if we were to get into a race war, more than likely, um, speaking just based on logistics, we will lose because they have, they meaning the white supremacist elites, they have been working on weapon systems and, you know, biological warfare, chemical warfare, nuclear warfare, psychological warfare for centuries because they need these things in their mind to survive on the planet. So if you haven't been doing that for the past four or five decades, because you've been partying and drinking and partying and bullshitting and twerking and, and you know doing other shit then you're not prepared to go into any race war with anybody um you could win little battles but warfare is a long protracted struggle it's not something that happens in a six minute video okay sometimes wars take years are you prepared to make sacrifices for war are you prepared to not be comfortable for a few years are you prepared to not go to mcdonald's <laughs> or get your fast food fixed for a few years for the sake of going to war because again let wartime come, McDonald's is shut down, okay? KFC is shut down, Popeyes is shut down. And I'm not saying that we don't know how to cook for ourselves. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that a lot of us have gotten used to the comforts and the luxuries of living in this capitalistic society to the point where we have not prepared for a war. And that was the purpose of destroying the Black Power Movement and the Black Panther Party in general, right? And to make us fat and sick and comfortable and, you know, anti-Black, anti-intellectual, right? Um, drug addicts. We're all these things. Fat, dumb, slow, stupid, and sick. Because of the food they give us, 
the education system, the poisons in the water, all these things that they have been using to weaken us for the past few decades. What have we done to combat that? Is there a black owned CDC anywhere, a Center for Disease Control? Do we have like a research laboratory with billions of dollars and we research diseases and figure out ways to make new diseases <laughs> to use in war? Like these people developed a biological weapon and released it on the entire planet for the past couple of years. And y'all seem to have forgot about that already. Some of y'all were scared to lose your job if you didn't get a, 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 a you know, the shot. You think you're ready for war for real? Some of y'all not ready. The ones who talking the most shit are not ready, in my opinion, because war is not a game. It's not something you could just, you know, say, yeah, we ready for war and, and you're going to show a chair as your weapon. These people got, forget it, chairs, like they have military grade weapons that they've been developing for what, 60, 70, 80 years now with the military industrial complex. Y'all don't have nothing in comparison. Like I know it's jokes and games and stuff, but these white people are not happy about what happened. Should we care about that? No. Should we prepare for retaliation? Absolutely. Right? Making jokes online and saying, yeah, black power to send a third. You, that's not black power. I'm sorry. Yes, unity and solidarity are necessary to win any war, any battle. But you also need uh, tactical support. You need weapons. You need machines. You need infrastructure. Right? You need to produce your own food to feed your own soldiers. You think that you're going to have a race war with these people and they'll feed you McDonald's? They want to take care of you? Make sure you got the weapons you need? That's going to happen. They're not scared of you because they control your whole life. These white supremacists or the elites. They're not afraid of you because they know you're completely dependent on them. And some of us like being dependent on white supremacists or the white system because we can flex on other black people with the cars that we have, the shoes that we buy, right? Our degrees, right? Our salaries. We can use the white supremacist system to make us look better than other black folk. So do not threat to them. You love them too much. However, again, it was great to see black people come together to show support. Um, it was amazing, but don't get it twisted. A lot of black people love white civilization and white society and white status symbols to fight against shit. Um, you know, you're not gonna win a race war if you love your BMW more than a stranger, a black stranger with no money, right? Um, a lot of us have purchased nice things with our money, right? We got the cars, the shoes, the jewelry, the house, right? We got the status symbols that say, we made it. We not like the rest of these N-words. We're better than them. You think that those people are gonna give up that to fight a race war with for people they don't even like or respect? Don't get it twisted. If there's going to be a race war, do not look to your leadership to start it. Do not look to these politicians. Don't look to these academics from these you know, the celebrity academics, right? Don't look to these entertainers. Don't look to your religious leaders and don't look to the business class. In my opinion, you're going to have to rely on the grassroots to do this because the black elites are just as corrupted, in my opinion, as the white elites. As a matter of fact, some of the black elites are white elites. Like Dick Gregory said, white is an attitude. It's not just a complexion, it's an attitude. A lot of black people who are elites have white attitudes a black, about you, about black folks. So it's not as simple as to say, yeah, we wanna rebel against the white establishment, white supremacy. No, a lot of us wanna be white. So before you can win any race war, you have to win the psychological war first. Do you love yourself and your people enough to sacrifice the, the white symbols and trinkets of success for them? If not, then be quiet about a race war. If you're not willing to give up Netflix and Popeye's chicken, okay, um, then you're not ready for no race war, just to keep it 100. I don't mean to sound condescending or patronizing, but a lot of us underestimate what a war is. We have not seen or felt or been in war, many of us. Um, we have been in this bubble of like poverty <laughs> and ignorance um, for the past several decades. It's been fun poverty, right? We got music. Music makes the poverty sound better makes it feel better. We got the drugs, we got the sex, we got the twerking, you know, we got all this stuff, but we've, we've been in this bubble of delusion thinking that um, just because we haven't been slaughtered, it means that it's because we can't be slaughtered or because somebody's afraid of us. That's not the case. Trust me. Um, a lot of these white supremacists have no problem burning down this entire country to make sure you don't get control over it. Are you willing to fight for that for decades? If not, then be quiet about a race war. Just appreciate the solidarity that black people showed in this particular moment and use the emotions that you feel from watching us come together to treat your spouse better, 
Treat your girlfriend better. Treat your boyfriend better. You know, take care of your kids. Use that energy of like this black love, this black family, black solidarity, black support to start to heal some of the trauma that has corroded the trust that we have with each other. We don't trust each other as much as we used to. We don't love each other as much as we used to. There's a lot of animosity between the genders for various reasons, black men versus black women. We've seen this and heard this happen ad nauseum for the past decade on social media, okay? Even in the music, right? The music that black people have been listening to, the hip hop music that promotes violence and degradation and destruction and warfare, um, that did not make black people feel as good as we did when we saw us coming together in solidarity, okay? Remember that. Remember the way it feels to see us come together to fight for and protect one of our own. Not a celebrity, because fuck them, okay? I'm talking about the regular common man. Forget celebrities. We have to get out of celebrity worship, please. That's a really important point for us because these celebrities are in bed with the white supremacist elites. Not all of them, but many of them are. Many of them see you as a clown. They see you as an idiot, as an animal, as something beneath them, okay? Do not look to these black celebrities to be your leaders. I'm not saying that all of them are traitors, but many of them are, especially in the political class, especially in the religious class. These pastors and these politicians both ain't shit, okay? Let's just keep it under, okay? So again, to close it out, it was amazing to see us come together as a community. I like the way I felt when I saw the Vanguard post up, okay? These brothers, again, they weren't trying to defend a celebrity. They didn't have any guns. They weren't being belligerent. They were just showing support and solidarity to their fellow coworker, who was another black man, taking care of his family, right? Um, and then the passengers on the boat also showed support. Again, um, it was heartwarming to see that. I wish I could take that feeling and bottle it up and sell it to people in our community who need their hearts healed from decades of trauma drug abuse, sexual abuse, domestic violence, um, poverty, mental health issues. I feel like a lot of us were healed partially, not completely healed, but it was medicine for many of us to see the solidarity and support because we've spent the past two decades watching slave porn movies, watching the police gun us down the streets, watching black on black violence, you know, and based on reading the comments um, on social media and on these forums, um, I can sense that this this situation that happened really helped to soothe and to heal black people's broken hearts. A lot of us are walking around with broken hearts. I've talked about this uh, a long time ago. A lot of us are born with broken hearts because of generational trauma that's inherited and passed down from the mother. Okay, we're born with these broken hearts. We see this, you know, confusion, a lack of community, a lack of family, a lack of support, a lack of love. We see all this stuff in the music and then the media and then the movies, we see all of this anti-blackness around the world. And all of a sudden you have these poor black folks coming together for no other reason than it was the right thing to do. I don't think anybody was thinking about the financial benefit of this, right? Cause they're going to get money um, and they deserve it, but they did it because it was the right thing to do. And you could feel it in their spirit. And that is what is healing for us. We need to see more examples of us coming together to put in work or to be productive. Not just fighting, but to be productive. This video was soul food for many of us. A lot of us have watched it, including myself, a lot of times, like dozens of times. <laughs> just to show, just, you know, different angles to see what's happening, whatever, whatever. It was soul food for us, many of us. We need more examples of this. Fuck these rappers, fuck these politicians, and forget most of these religious leaders who ain't about shit, but protecting white supremacy, which has rewarded them with their kingdom on earth, right? All right. All right, guys, I'm going to leave it there. Um, I look forward to reading your feedback. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I will speak to you soon.